Hello everybody! It's time for another weekly wrap-up since it is Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day! I don't really have a preamble this week, so let's talk about what I read. I read four books this past week, and the first one was, of course, Gentleman Joel and the Red Queen by Lois Master Bujold. This is the 16th Vorkosigan novel, and yeah, you need to have read all of the previous books. I mentioned when I was reading this last weekend that it was challenging, and I think I led some people to believe that I wasn't enjoying it very much, like I thought that Bujold was doing something wrong in the book, and I didn't mean to imply that. I actually think that she wrote this very well. The, the issue is that she's talking about characters who have been in her books for 30 years, but haven't had their own POVs in the books in 30 years. They are very beloved characters, Errol, Cordelia. After a time when you've read so many books, and when these characters have appeared as in cameos and as secondary characters and many previous books, you make a lot of assumptions about them. You think you know everything there is to know about them, and yeah, I kind of have my headcanon versions. And then in this book, Bujold tells you that there is this whole other side to the character of Cordelia and also of Errol and their marriage and all of these other events in the series that you've never seen because their POVs weren't in those books and they had their private lives and their secrets that nobody else knew about, not even Miles, their son. So it's all a bunch of these surprising things coming out in this book and you think you know people 100% and then it turns out you don't. Everything in this book is internally consistent with all the books previous. Uh, there's nothing in here that made me go, Bujold, what are you doing? It was just surprising. But once again, I do think that Bujold did it very well. This is a well-written book. It is a pretty slim installment in the Vorkosigan series, and I liked that it was so short. It's also quite a domestic novel. There isn't a lot of physical action, and at about the halfway point, I realized that not much had really happened. It's just about these characters going about their daily life and their jobs while contemplating major decisions for the rest of their lives. And you will either like that or you won't. I ended up giving this book four stars, and I would just say simply that I thought it was stronger or appealed to me more than a couple of the more recent books like Captain Vorpetreel's Alliance. Next, I read The Falling Woman by Pat Murphy. I buddy read this with Tara, and we both really liked this book when we read it very quickly because we didn't want to put it down. It was just incredibly easy to read. I thought it was very competently written, very beautiful in places, and the story and the characters felt so real. Sometimes you just, you read a book and you're like, this person is real, and the way they talk is real, and how they have difficulties with other people. It just, this is real life. Apparently, Pat Murphy writes characters very well, and I believe that now. This is a magical fantasy contemporary novel. It was written in the 1980s, and it is also set in the 1980s, and it follows an older woman named Elizabeth, who is an archaeologist. She is working on Mayan ruins in Mexico, and she is very estranged from her daughter. Uh, she had a very nasty uh, divorce with her husband. It involves her husband kind of hospitalizing her for mental illness. He thought she was mad or insane, and she's not. She just happens to see the past. She sees dead people. <laughs> that was terrible, I'm sorry. And then this thing happens where her daughter goes to Mexico, randomly shows up at her mother's um, archaeology site and wants to help. She just wants to get away from some things, but she does not know her mother. Her mother doesn't know her. They have a very awkward relationship, and the past is starting to seep into the present. Elizabeth can, like I said, see the past. She's walking around the Mayan ruins and she sees the Mayans there. She is like watching a movie of the past, I guess. She could just see these people walking around about their everyday lives. 
and they can't see her, she can't interact with them, until one day, this Mayan priestess sees her and starts talking to her, and she wants to bring back one of the Mayan goddesses in a ritual and it involves human sacrifice. This is one of those stories that is really more focused on characters and their relationships rather than the magic aspect. You could take away everything about the magic in the past and seeing the Mayans in the present day. Just get rid of all of that and most of the story would remain intact. It's just another way of exploring these women's relationship and their difficulties with how people think that they are mad when they just have this other ability. I really enjoyed this. I would very much recommend it to people who want, once again, a different type of fantasy to read. Probably if you enjoy magical realism more than like epic fantasy, you would like this because it, it, it does feel more like a contemporary story in some parts rather than a fantasy novel but it was very enjoyable to read, very well written, and I would recommend it. I finally finished Grass by Sherry S. Tepper. Can I be honest? At this point, I'm a little bit tired of talking about this book because I read it with a bunch of people and I've already said what I wanted to say to them and I've kind of spewed my rant in a couple of places about what annoyed me in it. Um, so I don't know how much more I really want to talk about this book. The basic story is that a plague is threatening all human life. It has infected all planets, except for this one planet called Grass, which is kind of isolated. But the rumor is that the plague can't affect people on Grass, that when infected people go there, they are cured. So this family, a woman named Marjorie, her husband Rigo, and their two teenage children are sent to Grass to investigate whether there is in fact uh, an immunity there or a cure to save humanity because everybody is on the verge of dying. Things of course get more complicated than that. I really enjoyed the first half of this book when there are a lot of mysteries, the setting of the world, the descriptions of grass, and the hints of those mysteries about what the sentient species is there. There are just a lot of questions that had me very intrigued, very invested in reading the story in the first half. The second half was not as good and Part of that is just that there were a lot of discussions of religion and ethics and original sin, but also some sexism and misogynistic stuff going on that just didn't work so well for me, but it felt very heavy-handed. I have read religion and ethics and philosophy and all of that in other science fiction books and thought it was just handled so much better. So I didn't really enjoy those parts, and in particular, I was really bothered that religion is honestly portrayed so negatively in this book. It bothered me a lot that religion was so negatively portrayed with its effects on society, but also that every character in the book who is either religious or has their life shaped so much by religion is a bad person or has very negative qualities or just has crappy life experiences. It needed to be better balanced for the discussion of religion to really mean anything. That's my opinion. Anyway, I, I'm a little tired of thinking about that, so that was grass. I did enjoy reading the book. I'm very glad I read it and I would like to read more by Tepper, but I definitely would say there are other science fiction books that tackle these topics and questions in a better way. The final thing I read this past week was this really cute graphic novel. It's Relish, My Life in the Kitchen by Lucy Nisley. I'm guessing at the pronunciation there. This is a graphic memoir where the author gives you her personal life story through incidents of food. It's about food memories, great meals, great dishes associated with really memorable things in her life, often memorable because of the food. So each chapter is an event in her life and each chapter also ends with uh, a recipe. And I just, this was cute. It was really sweet. 
it's it's really fun to read, very easy to read, and it has really cute art style. I'm using the word cute a lot, but I'm not sure what else um, applies. I picked this up uh, because I had it bookmarked at the library for a while, but Elena from Elena Reads Books read it recently and she showed some of the artwork and I just thought I want to get that because I think it would just really lift my mood and it did. So if you like graphic memoirs, if you like graphic novels and you want to read something about food that'll probably make you really hungry, get this one. That is everything that I read this past week. If you have read any of these or you want to, please gush or rant or otherwise say things in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you and I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye.